Phil, did you, did you see anything in those numbers that, that I mean, long term, you've got numbers that scare me a lot in terms of where interest expense for the government is going to rise. And, you know, even though the deficit's down, cut in half to $1.4 trillion, we still, that, that, what did the student loan add to the $1.4 trillion? Like, we were below a trillion, right? And then we did that, and we're, now we're yeah. back to $1.4 trillion. That was a huge mistake, in, in my view. Uh, but it was half of last year. But did you see anything in that number yesterday that, that gave you solace? Um, I, I mean, like Steve said, the, you know, the, the used car prices are coming down. Um, you know, we have a sense that the, the housing price numbers are, you know, more lagged. So, you know, even though, the, even though those are running hot, there's some sense that, that uh, housing price inflation could slow. Um, you know, look, the Fed, of, of course, is going to do more. And, and we see the effect of that in the economy. And we're seeing that in interest-sensitive sectors, in investment. And we'll see um, later today about uh, consumer spending. But, um, yeah, there's, there's more work to be done. You're cheering the Fed on, Phil, so with another 75 and then another 75 after that. Is that the right move? Uh, you know, we have to predict what the Fed will do for our, our budget projections because interest rates, right, I mean, the government is on both side of it, sides of interest rates, but higher interest rates have a pretty big fiscal effect. And so in some sense, that's the fiscal risk right now is if interest rates, you know, go higher and stay higher, that'll feed through into um, net interest spending. I mean, it, people say that it's, inflation helps the government in terms of, you know, p paying off debts with with cheaper dollars, but you think that gets offset by the higher borrowing costs, right? Yeah, that, that's right. It, it, the U.S. government also pays for things that, you know, inflation makes higher costs. And we saw some of that yesterday with the Social, social Security uh, cost of living increase. The government pays for lots of other things, well, including energy. You know, we, we pay for lots of jet fuel for um, the Air Force and Navy. And, um, yeah, so it's really the, the fiscal risk is interest rates. That's really, in the near term, that's a fiscal risk. Long term, Phil, you point out that the, I don't know how. Do you, do you sleep okay at night? What the the interest as a percentage of GDP is going to be almost eight uh, percent in in a couple of decades. It's never been that high before. Yeah. That 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 hurts growth. It takes away, uh, you know, funds that could have been spent on really useful things. It, it's just not where we want to go. There's no stopping it though, is there? Right. And that, as you said, that's the challenge, is that net interest payments are rising from one point six percent of GDP now to you know, more than double, 3.3 percent in 10 years, and then doubling again you know, over the next 30 years. And that's just going to squeeze out all the other things that we want our government to do from, you know, whether it's national defense, whether it's, it's more tax cuts, whether it's spending on education, anything, interest payments are going to squeeze all of that out. Hey, Phil, um, could you, yeah, walk us through this, Phil. How, how much of a percent of spending could be d devoted or, or that we have to spend on interest rate or interest expense? Uh, okay. I mean, so it's 1.6 percent of GDP, and that's, you know, that, that's the, the spending that we are going to make. I mean, right, this is from Alexander Hamilton, um, the, the start of the republic, um, and, and it's, it's climbing. And so that, you know, that's the challenge, that we, we can't do anything about it, and higher interest rates will feed back into higher payments. Now, you know, the good news is that the Treasury doesn't fund itself with 30-day T-bills. So we have, you know, there's lots of debt that's locked in at, um, you know, long-term rates. The d average duration is, is around seven years now. Um, but there is, is like an accelerator effect that if rates inflect up, the spending will increasingly go to, to those interest payments.